In the next section of this webinar, I want to discuss how to manage challenging root canal anatomy using the ProDlider and ProTaper Next instruments. Here we can see a few examples of cases with challenging anatomy that was easily managed with the ProDlider ProTaper Next combination. However, in these canals, I used a different protocol compared to that we've discussed before. So allow me to share with you one clinical case to illustrate this protocol. Our patient, Fiona, a 42-year-old female, presented with a non-vital upper first maxillary molar. Also visible on this periapical radiograph is the severe canal curvature in the mesu buccal root canal system. We started canal negotiation with a 08k file and the file hanged up in the apical third at the point of maximal, maximum root canal curvature. In narrow canals, where you often battle to get negotiation to patency, I would recommend that you use the pro glider in instrument just in the coronal two thirds of the canal or up to the point where the hand file hanged up. The pro glider is then used in a backstroke brushing motion in order to create more coronal space in the canal. You will be amazed to see that how many times this protocol enables the same file hand file that hanged up to progress to full working length or to patency. Here we can see the periapical radiograph of my working length radiograph clearly illustrating the complex anatomy of the mesial buccal root canal system. Once we achieved working length and made a size 10k file loose to create a reproducible microroot light path, then you can go back to the probe glider to expand that light path to full working length. On this video you can see that I'm using small backstroke brushing motions to expand that light path before we will do canal preparation with the ProTaper Next instruments. After irrigation, recapitulation and a re-irrigation cycle, it is time to introduce the ProTaper Next X1 file into this challenging anatomy of this canal. In some cases you might find that the ProTaper Next X1 progresses normal down the complex canal, but in some cases you will feel from the tactile feedback despite the coronal brushing motions, that the file still hangs up and does not really want to progress. On this video, you can see that I introduced the X1, brushed my way down for a few millimeters, but then experienced complete resistance, and I could feel that the instrument takes a lot of strain. In these situations, it is recommended to back out of the canal and follow with an irrigation cycle to remove debris and to check patency. Now here's my clinical tip. Instead of going back to the X1 for a second cutting cycle, I would recommend to you to introduce the ProTaper Next X2 and brush your way down to the same level as where the X1 previously hanged up in the canal. Then again, after that, check patency and irrigate and clean the flutes of the instrument. If you now go back to the ProTaper Next X1, after you've cleaned its cutting flutes, you will find that the X1 will progress very easily to full working length, without any strain on the instrument while it prepares the apical third of the canal. I find this protocol a much safer way to introduce ProTaper Next instruments when I'm faced with complex anatomy. This is again followed with an irrigation recapitulation and re-irrigation cycle. We can now introduce ProTaper Next X2 again in a conventional way to prepare the apical third of the canal. We irrigate again and verify the canal shape with a size 25 night eye hand file as we discussed previously. In this case I decided to obturate this curved root canal system with gutter core and on this video you could see the fit of the verifier. This is the post-operative radiograph that illustrates the immediate post-operative result clearly showing maintenance of the root canal anatomy 
in the mesial, mesial buckle root canal system using this protocol that I've just described. Thank you.